Hey everyone and welcome back to another Rush Kit video and today we're going to be taking a look at the X470 Prime Pro. So it's still the AM4 um, uh, pin out, it's still the AM4 socket but it's got the new X470 chipset nestled just underneath this here. Now I am under NDA so I can't talk to you too much about it but I do have the uh, Ryzen 2 3 and 5 2600X and 2700X in the house. And the reviews for those will go live on the OC3D main channel on the 19th. Today, I'm just allowed to give you a look at the board. It's just aesthetics that I'm allowed to talk to you about. Um, and you can take as many hints from what you can see on the boards as you like. Now, we do have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight power phases there. So you get six up the side and then two here. These are for the uh, CPU power cores, the CCX modules, that stuff. Then the other two, they're for the SOC, so the silicon on chip. That's mainly to do with the memory itself. What we can see is you've still got um, dual channel memory. There's an M.2 heatsink underneath here, but you do get a secondary M.2 now as well. Six SATAs down the side, USB 3.1 on board. Um, you can also see that we've got normal USB 3 down the bottom and two USB 2s. Two USB 2s, epic when you've got things like AIOs and uh, power supplies that can all connect into these now and all need that bandwidth to be able to talk to the operating system. So what we can also see uh, around here is we've got a power header, uh, sorry, fan header up here. So we've got one there, one there. So there's two, that's CPU fan and CPU optional. There's another fan header here. There's two more fan headers down the bottom. Scanning around the bottom, there's nothing else, but there are two more up here. And one is the AIO pump and one's just a normal chassis fan. The AIO pump will run at 100% though. So if you plug a fan into that, it's gonna blow super fast and you will need to um, kind of tail it in if you're thinking about having a, a slightly quiet system. Something else that we can notice around the back is um, on this board, you do still get the display out. So you've got a display port and a HDMI. This does mean that it is compatible with the APUs and still using onboard video. So you can, because the, the 2600X and the 2700X that I've just shown you does not have onboard video. So even if you were to put it in this board, these won't then magically work. You do need a dedicated graphics card for those. But what you can see is we've got USB 3s and then USB 3.1 Gen 2s here. It's, and um, I'm, I'm, these blue ones, I need to double check what they're for. We will cover that in the, um, yeah, USB 3.1 Gen 2, and then the USB 3.1 Gen 1. Okay, right, okay. So this is USB 3.1 Gen 1. This is USB 3.1 Gen 2. That's confusing. Then you've got Gigabit Ethernet. You do get a PS2, which is going to be good news for some gamers. Your digital audio out. Um, and I actually do think it looks kind of nice, but it does have an extra party trick up its bag that I can show you. Um, and that's because I have a magic cable and oh god and that is the lighting uh, and it's um with like the the strix boards for example you don't get the extra lighting down on the chipset so i think it's kind of nice that they they have spread it across on the prime and i do think it kind of works kind of kind of well as well i love the fact that it's um slightly understated in that it's kind of got that kind of pastel-y kind of effect to it because of the white. But don't forget, if you don't like it, you can just turn it off, so it's no big deal. Anyway, don't forget, this was a preview. I've probably said more than I should have anyway, but you will be able to go to the OC3DV, OC3D TV main channel on the 19th to see how those CPUs work in this board. 